What is going on? Welcome back to Shed Built. In this week, I'll show you guys how I made my DIY dual battery tray and how you can save some money by making one yourself. All right, now that we know that it runs and dries and everything's working as it should be, besides my indicators, which I'll have to dive into. But other than that, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna start stripping out everything that I put in here. All of this obviously isn't the staying around. So I think the first thing I'll tackle is making a dual battery tray to go from about here where this one starts back up towards the firewall there. I'll get stuck into it.
done i know i haven't said much of anything really but that's mainly because i'm i'm just winging it i'm really not working off anything just been putting it in taking it out seeing what fits and um yeah it's coming up all right the two cross supports in either side to give it a bit more structure it's, it's so simple it's just a bit of angle iron cradling it from underneath and then some supports i'm only mounting it to the one panel, not the two, Sam Wiles. You can see down there, I've just had to put a little step in it to come back down for some clearance. But now I'm just gonna throw some paint on it. All up, it's cost me like 20 bucks. I've got a, some quotes from some companies that won't be named in excess of up to 300. So I'm pretty stoked with it for what it is. But yeah, we'll chuck some paint on it and we'll get it installed and that should be done. So the battery box is now all wrapped up. Got it all in there. Put the straps on. I've just had to. I had to cut off those wing nuts for this mount here because it was sitting on this support rail on the right. I cut those off. Just chuck some bolts on there instead. Uh, it's all wired in. Everything's working the way it should be. Now that that's done, I'm just going to work on a little plate I can chuck in here. I've just made up this template. You can see it's going to bolt up there. Jesus Christ, I don't know what that was, something loud, tractor. But uh, yeah, I've just cut out this template here. Now I'm going to transfer this over to the sheet, cut it out, and then we'll be able to mount stuff like fuse panels, uh, power outlets, and a uh, relay box on this sheet here, yeah, instead of having to drill a thousand holes. Alright, so I've made up that plate for the corner now. I've also add a little notch down the bottom here for the wires to pass through. And you'll be able to see now what it's for, so we can mount the power outlet right here. And I've also got a, a fuse box to mount in between there as well. And one thing I hated with the last setup was all the, the relays that used to just hang off, all the bolt holes slitted throughout the firewall. So I've grabbed a relay box, as you can see here. I've also made up a little bracket for that, that hangs off the, the radiator support there. So you can see it there, it's mounted down the bottom. And here we can wire up all of our relays and it's also got an inline fuse in there too. So one thing I have done, which took forever, is wired up these LED lights and Toyota uses a negative switching ground 
to actually turn on the headlight, so you have to run two relays, a low beam and high beam to actually run the lights to switch it to positively switched. And if you're interested in that, I'll chuck a, a diagram, a clearly readable diagram in the description. But yeah, I'm just going through and wiring up the headlights. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is mount the outlet and fuse box, and then we can start routing all the wiring. Right, so the battery tray's in, got the ground hooked up, the power, and you can see it's all plumbed into this triple relay down there, triple fuse, and that's also powering this fuse panel and the relay panel. So it comes in through here into the fuse panel, that splits off into the relay box here. It's got our relays and stuff inside, and then it's also tripped by the um, accessories on the factory power outlet. Now that's all buttoned up, we're going to install the ARB bar and we'll start looking like a car again. All right, now we've got the bar on, we're gonna start working on something that I've been wanting to do since the day I bought the Troopy. Something that they should have been done from the factory really, but it's something I think that all 70 series Land Cruiser owner should have, those bonnet struts. I thought I was gonna have to make these myself, but after speaking to a couple of people who've done similar, they all recommended BT Cruiser struts. You can find them on Facebook or Instagram, but it's a full bolt-in kit for the bonnet struts comes with the instructions and struts itself and a mounting plate to mount on your bracket. You will have to modify your bonnet, but it's only three or four rivets. Uh, comes with all the hardware you need, detailed instructions of exactly where it's going. 
But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go start installing them now. Look at this, one hand, boom. Anyone who doesn't own a 70 series is probably going, what are you talking about? That's normal, but it's definitely not. You can't appreciate this unless you find one of these, and this is awesome. It's probably the most simple, most effective mod I've done so far, and it was so simple to install. All you do is measure 55 mil from your factory bracket, mark that, hold the BT bracket up to it, pop rivet in the four rivets and then connect the strut down to your factory bolt down there and they've supplied the other little spigot that goes in there and that's it done repeat the, repeat the same for the other side and it's smooth simple and you get heaps more height as well over the factory bonnet latch and it's heaps cleaner too heaps more room to work around and do whatever you need to do so Beautiful. All right, and that is it for another episode. I'm super stoked with how the battery tray turned out. It only cost me like 50 bucks compared to the three, $400 quotes I was given from some of the big companies. Um, you can obviously change how you want to make it. You can add some more supports in or tie it into the chassis, however you want to do it. But uh, stick around for next week when we get stuck into the interior. I start cutting out the rusty floor and also take a look at some of the interior trim pieces. But until then, like, subscribe if you haven't already, you know the deal. And I'll see you next time. Cheers for watching.